To hold up the record of the safest and most reliable spacecraft ever built, SpaceX's Crew Dragon has applied a traditional yet effective landing method, splashdown for the riskiest phase. Although there is still much controversy surrounding this approach, its effectiveness is still highly appreciated by loyal customers, NASA astronauts, and even foreign astronauts. So, in today's episode of Tech Map, let's listen to what European astronauts think about Dragon's landing process. We will then compare the splashdown with other common landing methods. What do Europe European astronauts think about SpaceX Dragon landing. On March 12, NASA's SpaceX Crew-7 completed the agency's seventh commercial crew rotation mission to the International Space Station after splashing down safely in a Dragon spacecraft off the coast of Pensacola, Florida. The international crew of four spent 199 days in orbit, which included NASA astronaut Jasmine Mogbali, ESA astronaut Andreas Mogensen, JAXA astronaut Satoshi Furukawa, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Constantine Team Borisov. Among them, Andreas Mogensen is the first European Space Agency astronaut and first non-American to serve as a pilot on a U.S. commercial crew spacecraft. Clearly, this mission has given him much emotion. Most notably, he was impressed by how smooth a landing SpaceX Dragon was. Mogensen, speaking at his crew's first post-flight news conference at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston on March 25, likened their splashdown to plopping into the water of a swimming pool while wearing a life vest. What I noticed in particular was the the smoothness of the landing compared to my first flight, he said. His first flight was in 2015 aboard a Russian Soyuz spacecraft. The SpaceX Dragon lands in the water, and I think that makes a big difference. It was actually kind of a very soft splash, Mogensen added. NASA astronaut Jasmine Mogbali, who commanded Crew-7, agreed that the landing was soft but then found what came next to be rougher than what others observed. I felt like we were really rocking side to side, she said, describing the conclusion of her first space flight. But then everyone I talked to was like, oh, the water was glass when you landed. There was barely any wind. So I definitely felt a lot more motion than there was. For those who don't know, Soyuz also uses parachutes to land like SpaceX, but instead of splashing down like the U.S. vehicle, the Soyuz descent module will touch down on the land. In Kazakhstan, not Russia. Soyuz can land with an accuracy of only 20 kilometers with a probability of 0 0.9997 in the automated aerodynamic descent mode, a U.S. relative to the center of the projected landing area. The main reason for such a low precision is the susceptibility of the parachute landing to winds. Moreover, in case of a ballistic return, the capsule can end up as far as 600 kilometers short of the primary landing site for the aerodynamic mode. As a result, all Soyuz landings have to be planned over flat and open areas without any structures, rivers, or even trees. A total of 13 areas currently meet all the requirements for the Soyuz landing. Ironically, all of these sites are in Kazakhstan and none of them are in Russia. When planning Soyuz landings, engineers usually try to put the spacecraft down into the most preferable area during the first or second orbit of the day as the spacecraft moves on the ascending arc of the orbit from south to north. If this is impossible, they go down the list of 13 sites according to their priority order. If nothing works, mission managers can request an orbit correction or extend the mission to ensure that the ground track of the final orbit goes over the desirable landing site. By contrast, SpaceX Dragon considers the water, typically ocean, as the perfect cushion for the riskiest landing part. SpaceX's splashing down technique, landing in water helps absorb some of the impacts since the properties of water provide more cushion than solid ground. This can reduce the need for an extra braking system within the capsule and provides a safer method of landing for the crew inside. Even though splashdown is generally safe today, there are always risks to this method that engineers must test and design for. The biggest is the possibility of the capsule flooding and sinking while waiting for rescue teams to collect the crew from inside. Fortunately, that did not happen for the Crew-7. To avoid the risk of sinking, the capsule has to meet the strict design requirements making it float easily. Landing capsules naturally float by design since the outer shell is already designed to create an airtight seal that can withstand the vacuum of space. This prevents water from leaking in and flooding the ship while also keeping it afloat. The rounded metal bottom, or top depending on how it lands, works like the hull or bottom of a ship and will bob on the surface of the ocean until rescue crews can reach the capsule. To ensure the safe of the crew, capsules are now designed with additional flotation devices such as emergency rafts that can inflate if needed to increase buoyancy or to upright a ship that has landed top down. Capsules must be able to float for long periods of time as the astronauts rely on boats or helicopters to collect them and the capsule to bring them ashore. Each capsule that has been used in splashdown comes with its own unique features 
methods, and flaws. Splashdown is common for American missions that launch off of the coast because of the agency's easy access to the ocean. Other space agencies, such as those in Russia and China, are restricted to returning crews over land. In those cases, they must incorporate other safety measures, such as rocket boosters, to slow and reduce landing speeds even more. Splashdown landings were used in the return of the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo capsule. The SpaceX capsule Crew Dragon was added to the list as it successfully completed its first crewed landing in the Gulf of Mexico in early August 2020. To be honest, the idea of parachute descent was not the only technique considered for Dragon. Previously, SpaceX had come up with a thrust landing method, propulsive landing. This is one part of its plan to land the Dragon capsule on Mars in 2016. Known as the Red Dragon mission, the capsule was meant to lower itself to solid ground using engines embedded in its hull and then touch down gently on landing legs in a method known as propulsive landing. But Musk then recognized this approach to Dragon was not the right way anymore. This might be explained by several reasons as as follows, most important is safety. Propulsive techniques involve powerful engines and intricate systems that must operate flawlessly to ensure a safe launch, orbital maneuvering, and re-entry. Any failure in propulsion systems could jeopardize the mission and the lives of the crew. Next, propulsive systems must be highly reliable and capable of functioning in various conditions, including extreme temperatures, vacuum environments, and the harsh conditions of space. Achieving this level of reliability often requires extensive testing testing and validation, which can be time-consuming and expensive. Beyond that, propulsive maneuvers for crewed spacecraft, especially during critical phases such as docking with space stations or re-entering Earth's atmosphere, require a high degree of precision. Small errors in trajectory or velocity can have significant consequences, so the propulsion systems must be able to precisely control the spacecraft's movement. Efficiency is also a big matter. Efficient use of propellant is crucial for crewed spacecraft as it affects mission duration, payload capacity, capacity, and overall mission cost. Developing propulsion systems that optimize fuel efficiency while still providing adequate thrust can be a complex engineering challenge. Last but not least, crewed spacecraft must also consider the effects of propulsion on the human occupants. Vibrations, acceleration forces, and noise generated by propulsion systems can impact crew comfort, health, and performance. Designing propulsive techniques that minimize these effects requires careful consideration of human factors. Of course, Dragon 2 is still capable of landing propulsively because its abort system is equipped with a set of Super Draco. However, without landing legs, landing with the engines would be extra difficult to pull off. You'd have to land it on some pretty soft landing pad, he said. If you add those legs to the vehicle, the dead mass will also be increased, affecting the payload capacity of the vehicle as well as other factors. As a result, SpaceX is back to the traditional approach, splashing down in the ocean by parachutes. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you want to explore more aspects of the world's most powerful rockets and the world of rockets in general, here is a selection of deeper dive videos for you. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.